Hello and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar. Now this is a continuation, it is part two from part one, where we were going over the pedal design in my DIY supercar that I built using an old Audi as a donor car. So, in the last episode, we covered the position of the steering column and we covered the original pedals from the original donor car. So now we've done that, we can take a closer look at these pedals and I will show you how I made them. Well, it's a bit dark in there, so I'm just going to show you a series of pictures of the various parts that I had to design and build for my pedal assembly. Now this is the Mark 1 pedal assembly. There's essentially two or three versions of how to get it right. So, and uh, we'll cover that in a sec. So here we have a, this is a picture of the brake pedal. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that the brake pedal sort of pivots on the, the shaft, or should I say the clutch pedal pivots on the brake shaft. Okay, it's sounding complicated, but when you see these pictures, hopefully it'll make sense. Right, there's another angle. So, uh, and that's a side on view. This is getting, the, I had to do a lot of measurements, get the angles right. There's, you know, I'm probably oversimplifying it, but you've got to get the angle of the servo correct, the position of the servo. I had to move the servo from the original Audi position. It was never going to work with such a low slung car. So there's a lot of measurements involved. And uh, there's another view. And ah, right, well, here we go. Now this is the Mark I clutch pedal assembly. Now hopefully you can make out that very long shaft of uh, at, uh, at the top there. Well at the very end there's a flat and we'll get to that in a second. And there's another angle, you could just about make that flat that's been sort of milled into that shaft. Now this is the brake pedal and those two white um, nylon bushes are bushes and I took those from the original Audi pedal assembly you know to save a bit of money and if it works well for Audi it should work well for me oh yeah by the way whatever you do if you're gonna design and build your own pedals do not just put a bolt through a piece of steel and think that's a pedal you've got to run bushes at least nylon you've got to do that and you use some sort of um, a nylon grease that doesn't deteriorate the grease don't just use a bolt through piece of steel. I've seen that loads of times. It rusts, the pedals are terrible. Uh, here we go. So this is the clutch um, pedal and that's the shaft and there's a uh, nylon bush on the end. That passes through the brake pedal. This is just the bracket that supports the whole pedal assembly. And uh, that's another angle. By the way, that pedal assembly is bolted to the chassis. Now here we have the Mark 1 pedal assembly and it's all assembled. So the clutch pedal with its nylon bushes passes through the bracket that bolts into the chassis and that passes through the tube in the brake pedal. And that extra little bar there that you can see all on its own just to the side, that is for the clutch master cylinder. Now, I had to make a compromise on that, and this is something I'm going to have to go back to and redesign when I do the turbo build. I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, this is the accelerator pedal, the Mark 1 accelerator pedal build. This is just different views at it. Again, it uses nylon bushes, so that tube in the centre is designed to have nylon bushes in it. That's the bracket for the Accelerator pedal, nice and simple bracket so it could be replicated cheap and easily. This bracket here is for the brake 
pedal switch to activate your brake lights. Again, very simple bracket. And this is the Mark I pedal setup. And I got the pedal positions perfect, just the way I like them. They're fully adjustable, by the way, which we'll touch on in a sec. Here's another angle. Now, I was experimenting with the accelerator pedal, because obviously the engine is now in the back, and the cable is huge, and it goes all the way around to here. So I thought I'll try and use a weighted pedal to compensate for the extra long um, brake, sorry, extra long uh, throttle cable. But it didn't really work, it didn't feel right. So this is the Mark 1 version. That's front on view, and I got the pedals perfect the way I like them. And there's another view. As, as you can see, the pedal assembly is bolted to the chassis. This is a side on view. Now, I made the pedals because I'm thinking long term. Because if this does become a prototype and it's uh, um, you know, a kit that is sold, then people have different feet, different legs, all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to make the pedals adjustable. So you could actually adjust the pedal for reach. You could undo the locking nut and then you could just spin the pedal and you could push the pedal out or push the pedal in and then lock it in place. And there we go, so that's back to the pedals. So the Mark I pedal assembly didn't quite work. Um, one issue I had was the clutch. I'm using a um, Quattro clutch on this thing. Um, to disengage it needed quite a lot of pressure and this this original design couldn't cope with the amount of uh, torque that I was putting into the pedal. Now, if you remember that flat earlier, that was um, where a bolt would pinch the shaft, oh dear, would pinch the shaft, and then what would happen is that over time, if you used the pedal too much, that flat area would just basically be rubbed out and worn out, and then the lever that actually activated the um, slate, sorry, the master cylinder was all loose. So here's an image at the very top. This is the pivot area. Now, the pinch bolt idea didn't work. So what I did is I used a through bolt. So as you can see at the end there, you can see a bolt. Um, Unfortunately, that didn't work either because there was so much torque on the pedal that the, the bolt basically just bent and it, it just got all sloppy again. So, so we take a look. There's the overall picture of the pedals. You can see the brake pedal in the middle, uh, which works perfect. There's no issues with the brake pedal at all. Brakes on this car are fantastic. The clutch pedal, which runs through the centre of the brake pedal, um, that pivot there just couldn't cope and it would just always go sloppy. And there is the Mark I clutch pedal assembly. As you can see, the, the, the pedal goes up along the shaft and then down and then that little pivot there is for the master cylinder. There's another angle and that bolt at the top there just didn't work. And there's another angle again, no good. So this is the Mark II setup. Now this time around, because I had designed the pedals and I'd done some drawings, I sent the drawings off to a company that does water jet um, technology and they cut these out for me so I didn't have to make these by hand. Now at the top, I, ha I had a special super strong steel shaft made with a set of splines and then a boss that would slide over the splines. There is the super high strength steel shaft with the splines and the boss. There is a close up of the splines. So this was um, going to be held on with a clip, a um, little spring clip. And there is the splines inside the boss. Uh, another image of that. That's the Mark II setup. So the, um, I welded the boss onto the new master cylinder arm 
and then that slid onto the new high tensile steel shaft of the clutch pedal. There's another angle, another angle there. This design also had an added bonus where I could actually slip the splines off and then reposition them slightly and I could change the angle of the clutch pedal itself for comfort reasons. So it added a little you know, bonus to it. And now it is all back together again in the new assembly. So, there is still one more issue with the clutch pedal which I'll show you now. Yes, the clutch pedal. It's still not perfect and I'll show you why. The pedal itself I had to shorten, there's no getting away from it. And even though I moved the upper pivot as high up as I could, it's virtually inside here. You can't get the pivot any higher up. So the top pivot is as high as it can go. This pedal is as low as it can go, otherwise it becomes uncomfortable and unusable. However, when I push my foot on the clutch pedal, it's still pretty stiff. Now, you do get used to it, because I've driven this car when I was testing it out, and after a couple of times, it's fine, but I'm not totally happy with it. I've got to go back to this design, and I'll do that in the new, um, on the turbo build. I'll tell you what it feels like. Now, I've never actually driven a real Lamborghini Countach, Oh, by the way, if you've got one, give me a call. But uh, yeah, I've never driven one, but I have sat in one and I used the clutch pedal. And it feels like this. So, um, no, I'm going to improve on that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the reason why this pedal didn't work out the way I wanted. Now, if you've been watching from the beginning, then hopefully you've heard me reference engineering yourself into a corner and this is one of the reasons why I thought I would develop the car first and then do the styling second so I wasn't trapped by the actual limitations of the bodywork now even with all my measurements and jigs and planning there was always going to be an area that sort of got in the way and this is one area it's just the nature of the car. This is a low slung supercar. Now if we look inside here, this is the master cylinder for the clutch. Now in reality that needs to be higher up by about two inches to get the correct pivot for the clutch pedal. However, as you can see, there's a giant big shock absorber in the way. So now if we take a look down the back, we can see that the master cylinder is bolted to the chassis okay, but I couldn't get it any higher up. Now I thought I could move it more into the center of the car to get the height so it would clear the shock absorber, but then it would foul the servo. So while I was developing this and I had no way of testing it until I actually bolted the master cylinder to the slave cylinder with a clutch in place, so I had to take a bit of a gamble and I sort of dropped it by two inches to get my clearance. Unfortunately that has suffered the pivot and now that pedal is just too stiff for my liking. Now the earlier pedal assembly on the Audi A6 C4 was quite complicated but having a closer look at the C5 pedal assembly it looks like it's been simplified. So here we have the clutch master cylinder which fits to the pedal here. Now I'm pretty sure that the clutch pedal itself is going to be too long and I will have to shorten it. But I think I should be able to move that pivot here up closer to the overall pivot 
and this whole cylinder here can be mounted inside the car and therefore it should not get in the way of the servo. Now I won't know for sure but when I do the turbo build we'll go over this ground again and I think I might do a Mark III pedal assembly design. Now those of you who are eagle eyed might have noticed that this accelerator pedal does not look like the first one and of course this is the Mark II. So let's take a closer look at the Mark II accelerator pedal design. Yep, time travelling again, which means I made this episode way too long. I don't know how that happened, I must be babbling too much, so I apologise if I'm babbling too much. Am I babbling too much? I am now, aren't I? Okay, anyway, so what I'm going to do is make this a three-parter, and the reason is, is I want to show you some footage of some Lamborghini pedals, and also a rather interesting clip of some quality rallying. So I didn't want to miss that out. So I'm going to end it here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in part three.